All right. So I remember when I read stuff and I listen to all the conspiracy stuff, right? You know, people listen to conspiracy stuff and they don't get a lot of confirmation from like when you're in the conspiracy world and you're looking for proof and you're trying to find an article in the mainstream media because, you know, even the alternative mainstream media can be questioned. And, and, and so I know that I use the mainstream media and sometimes the alternative mainstream media to back up my thesis because sometimes it's hidden in plain sight. Other times it's the opposite is true. But even if the opposite is true, how would you still prove it? So then you have to understand, like with the whole J world, you have, in order for you to be relatively pain free, when you think about it in the future, relatively, and that's all relative, you have to face the pain. How do you tell that to people who are running away from pain? That you have to face the pain in order to have be relatively pain free in the future. And you have to support the pain with the food and the release process, right? So that's a hard thing to prove to those who run away from pain all the time. So then how do you tell people who don't believe that we're in a scale down. How do you tell them that we're in a scale down? We're in a depopulation agenda. We're in another mass extinction. And they've read history, but they're like, oh, it's not, it's, we're not doing World War II again. No, we're not. We're not doing like the hand-to-hand -hand combat, like the Civil War. We're not repeating that kind of history. Now this war is a very different war. And so, when I've been talking about, you know, when people are saying like, well, look at the Deagle report, which shows that projected, you know, decline in, Amer in, 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 in Americans, but then you see the regular report out there that says that, oh, we're going to have 388 increase in population. So those two are conflicting with each other. Are you going to believe the Deagle report that's a conspiracy? Or are you going to believe like the Scientific American that says, okay, here's the census. We're projecting three, 388 million in the future. So where's your whole depopulation agenda, Jillian? Prove it without using the Daigle report. <laughs> okay. That's when all of my information had to come into play. All of it. That's when you realize why, why the borders are based. I don't say they're open because I couldn't prove that they're open. I'm not there. But there's a lot of immigrants coming in. They're telling you. They're saying a lot of immigrants are coming in. Well, why are they? Because all you people who don't understand what the fuck's going on are dying suddenly. All you people who think that, that, that taking food away from your kids and not making any changes and not learning how to adapt, you're dying suddenly. Why do you think they have the borders are basically open? And, and the ones that, that, that are not, they don't think is going to work over here, you know, or, or make it. For whatever reason, maybe they might take the kids, but maybe not the adults, and the adults get sent back. Because they can train the kids. It's hard to train an adult who's like, who can't speak the language. So you have to use a lot more resources, but they'll take the kids who could potentially have a chance. And so I'm sure I know what the, what the border is doing. They're bringing people who are able-bodied, setting them up in different places. I completely understand what's going on. I have no problem with it. Because what they're doing is replacing those of you who are going to die suddenly. You're treating pain, treating disease, you're on your diet, you're an activist up to yin-yang, you don't understand indicators, you don't listen to history, you don't even care about the future, you won't scale down your lifestyle, so you not only you work yourself to death, but you play yourself to death, be addicted to yourself to death, and there's somebody who really appreciates what America stands for, really appreciates our fucking life, and they're sitting out there, you know, next, you know, a few towns over, waiting for you to die. So they can take your place. That's why there's going to be an increase in the population. Because we're going to bring in so many immigrants who are able-bodied. Who would appreciate the American fucking dream. Versus those who take it for granted. Who are all in your, all played up in your wealth. And slicked up in your wealth. And flaunting your wealth. And, and pleasure and addictions. And then we have people who are not addicted. Who are not in the pleasure. Who don't have anything. Who are so desperate to make it. And whatever that American dream is. I don't know what it, the American dream is over there. But they have their families of course. But they're not, they're not dealing with cancer disease and chronic illness. And addiction. Which is basically a rich man's luxury is addiction. A rich man's luxury. 
I never had the luxury to be addicted. I'm, t- I'm telling you, I was always fucking poor and trying to make it because I had my own diseases. But it must be nice to be addicted, to have the luxury to be addicted. It must be fucking nice. And so that's why the immigration is what it is. And that's what America was founded upon. Ellis Island immigration, though there was ways to do it and since we had a population that we were okay with for you know, the last 20-something years and the populations are declining because of climate change. And people were just, they, they weren't making any changes. They don't want to. They're too comfortable in all their big families, all of their baubles, all of their wealth, all of their traditions. And eventually, you know, the devil's going to take his due. I mean, you were given so much. Now, how are you going to deal when the climate changes? And so then I was thinking, so yesterday I was thinking about population. I'm thinking like that was the, the thing I had to figure out how I was going to explain that. Because how do you explain when you're trying to say we're in a scale down and they're like projecting this. You the Daigle report people are putting out there in the Die Sunday groups. And then you have the Scientific American, the Census Bureau, saying that we're going to have an increase in population. But what do you mean by increase? Well, yeah, it doesn't always mean that you're going to be having a bunch of babies. You're seeing the West declining in fertility. Well, if we're having an increase in population, but they're saying there's going to be a decrease in fertility in 2045, 20-something years from now, right? How, how do those two jive? Oh, we forget about immigration, don't we? We forget about that. We're, we all the right wings are all against the immigration. The left wing is like, yeah, bring them in. That's fine. But people are denying the fact that uh, there's going to be infertility in the West. Well, there already is. Well, people are dying suddenly. That's an infertile. When, when you die suddenly, you're not fertile anymore, right? Because there's no life there. You're not, there's no life. I mean, not technically, like as far as the definition, but infertility is when you're cured, you can't have a baby. Maybe you might be still moving and doing your stuff, but you can't have a baby. And 100% infertile means, or 100% cured means you're dead. And so I had to figure out how I was going to weave into my book. Because I have basically my notes. You saw, I, I'm showing you how exactly I'm getting to my thought process. This is not like I'm not being fed in information by some Illuminati person. This is my brain working because I released the demons. And I don't have any addictions. I'm not, you know, dealing with any conditions. I'm not distracted. I don't, you know, I, I live on the bare minimum. I live on spaghetti, mac or macaroni, uh, hamburger and milk and coffee. And I feed my brain information. Okay. And so I had to figure out how to weave in the whole population depopulation because I said the Georgia Guidestones is about guiding reproduction carefully. Eventually, we're going to be at 500 million. It's not going to be like in 2050. That'll be the infertility of the West. And then, potentially, even by 26 or 3, you know, 3,000. I don't know about that. But maybe 50 years later, 3,000 is a lot. That's too many years. 2100. 2100. Then you're like, okay. Africa is going to be declining. So I could probably go do the math and figure out how long it took for America. Well, shit, 200 years, 247 years to figure out the three generation rule. That's what America's going on. Everything was in segments of three generations. Okay, so I'm just going to read this and I'll just figure out what I'm going to say. 2023 Middle East infertility cancer died suddenly. 2045 infertility World War Three. And so infertility be 2045, 2050, but who's infertile? Well, the West. And so then I had to back up as far as the 20 year, 21, 22, 25 year in between each. Well, yeah, it's a turning. I mean, 20, yeah, because there's an 80 year, 20, 40, 20, 40, 60, 80, so 40 years. So it's like the turning, 20 year turning, 21 years between World War One and World War Two. There was 21 years between World War I and World War II. World War I ended in 1918. Then you had the, the, the flu pandemic, influenza, Spanish flu, right? Hits, hits kept coming. <laughs> that was the next war, right? <laughs> World War II began in 1939. 
and ended in 1945. And then approximately 21 years from World Vietnam War, right, to 9-11. So 1945 to 1975 is then the Vietnam War between World War II, right? 45, should I mix, I missed that. I don't know that. So four, yeah, 1945 to 1965, another 20 years between World War II and the Vietnam War. So no wonder I'm being, I'm raised by a silent generation. That was a baby back in World War II. I, you know what I gotta do? I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna write that right now. I can edit this post while I'm doing it. This is so freaking awesome. I love it. Oh my gosh. Cause I don't wanna miss that. I gotta actually make sure I write that. Okay. And <sighs> approximately 20 years between 1945 and, well, 30 years. Oh no, 20 years. It was 1965. And that's the Vietnam War, right? 1965, it ended in 1975. Yeah, something like that. It's around that area. Okay? And I'll say Vietnam War. Okay. Okay, so there you go. I want to make sure I got that in there. <sighs> All right. And then approximately 21 years between Vietnam War and 9-11. 1975, 1995, or maybe a couple of five years, 2001. Approximately 21 years between 9-11 and COVID-19. Okay. <laughs> And then the end of the Afghanistan and all that. The Vietnam War. The ritual of depopulation. Sexual revolution. Of course. Everyone wants to have sex. Screw each other out of existence. You have the hot chicks and the hot guys, the hot girls. And all the sexual predators and the serial killers. And, and the tech boom and all that. Civil rights. Okay, yeah, we got to stop destroying people because of their race and gender and all that stuff. Which I understand. Women's rights, yeah, stop. Stop enslaving women. Men and women. And the conservative movement, the whole family, right? And the religious right. What is the depopulation agenda? We've only just begun. Karen Carpenter. See, when you look at that song, and that song, which is really good that, Tanya, you liked that song because it showed that, yes, we've only just begun because you look at it from a positive point of view. That we've only just begun. You're starting out with family, right? You're building a house, white picket fence, 2.5 kids, a nice car, a nice job, nice neighbors, and 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 and, and parties and all of that, and promotions, and traveling, and innovation. And so we've only just begun, right? Everything is beautiful. Fast forward 20 something years later, fast forward another 40 years later, and now we're in the scale down. We've only just begun. <laughs> and then it's like that contrast, like when you watch a horror movie and they're bringing in some soft music from the 1970s, and it's so, it's so like hauntingly beautiful, but yet ugly. It's such a contrast. It's such a contrast. So I had to put that contrast together on the Facebook Reels to show you the, the, the decline. In my head, I'm thinking like, we've only just begun. Wait till all these kids, when, they, when they're dealing, like we already see these kids dying suddenly, you know, in different ages. Imagine when that hit close, when that hits close to home. We've only just begun. And you watch all, and you read that, that whole, all those lyrics, and you're like, fuck. Oh, it has, it hasn't even, it was begun, but it, it hasn't even got bad yet. Oh, it's bad right now. It's bad. But imagine how bad it's going to get. It's not getting any better. And so we've only just begun <laughs> to live by lace and promises, right? And then you see the rest of the song, right? So the population boom will turn into a population bust. 
Africa will have their own population boom and they are adopting our Western ways and you're seeing them up and coming. They're, they have their influences, influencers, the house. They have even a guy on my Facebook. Well, he's not a friend, but I follow him, A.H. Gulani. And he's recommending them to read all these Western literature. How to be, how to act, what to do. And they're dying for this information. They are so rabid for the knowledge. And I completely understand. That's how I was the last 49 years. So hungry for knowledge. So hungry for knowledge. Because when you have been, oh gosh, shielded and, I don't say handicapped, but when you were fighting so many different things, survival in your own body and your own immune system and fighting the world out there it's difficult to gain so much knowledge and they need to figure out why you're fighting how to gain knowledge why you're fighting and stay alive that's a juggling act you got to play so many different parts out there in order to find the information i mean i do have definitely student loan debt that i could prove that i've <laughs> been to college a few years but the rest is the school of hard knocks absolutely and hanging out with people who are so much smarter than me. You don't hang out with people who are dumber than you because you'll you'll become dumber. You hang out with people and follow people who are so much smarter than you. And you learn from them. And then you figure out some stuff and then and then you then you're you're then you're they're, they're equal on some level. It doesn't mean that you hang out together all the time, you move forward. But you never hang out people who are dumber than you. You always hang out people who are smarter than you. Because that's how you're going to fucking learn. And so, yes, I understand why A.H. Galani, who has a lot of a following, and he's an African influencer who's reading so many Western philosophy, Western literature books, and his followers who are in Africa are just gobbling it up, and they are fucking smart for doing that. However, they're getting sucked up for the kill. Because they're adopting the Western ways. They're gonna have, they're, they'll, they'll enjoy the, the, the fruits of their lips. They'll enjoy the wealth. And their relative fame. And the, living the high life. The nice houses. The nice cars. The nice food. They'll enjoy that. Oh, and I've been down that road too. And if you haven't, then when you do get down that road, it's hard to get away from it. You get addicted to it. And when you get addicted to the good life, You'll, 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 you'll sacrifice yourself and anything around you to, to keep that good life. And that's the dangers of the good life. Is that people won't change and they'll die in the good life. Oh, but you die happy. Well, that was the intention. That was the intention. That's depopulation. <laughs> but it'll get accelerated. It's, it's already accelerating here in the West. And so... So the population boom will turn into population bust. Africa will have their own population boom and they're adopting our Western ways, modern medicine, natural remedies, because you've seen them all over with their WhatsApp numbers selling you all their remedies. Here, talk to this doctor or whatever, and there's this other remedy for this, 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 and this. You get them all over. Um, and people are putting stuff up with certain keywords that then when people put in keywords and they see everyone who says that keyword, then they go, because it go through the, the search box, put in the, either the hashtag or the keyword and then my my information comes up and then they go and spam the shit out of you with all their herbal remedies. <laughs> I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> and so, and all the surgeries and of course all the wealth, they're getting slicked up. Saudi Arabia has their own wealth experience, mainly because of oil. But they have to support these rising, declining countries like Africa, India, Asia, right? The billions of people in these populations. Until those, until those populations burst or bust, Saudi Arabia will also bust as well. And so when, when, when the population declines in Africa, when the population declines in Asia, when the population declines obviously even in the West, and when it declines in India in all the other third world countries, then those who are making money off, obviously they're going to decline too because there's no one left to sell to, right? And of course we're going from fossil fuels to now clean burning energy like electricity. What Saudi Arabia will have fun for a minute and they will have to then deal with, with how they're going to do stuff. And maybe that's what they're doing now is they're building up their electric infrastructure. And so they're making money off of those who are now up and coming, who are making money off each other. I mean, it's a whole domino effect. But that's what I'm saying. What's going on right now is that we are building up 
the infrastructure for electric, getting away from fossil fuels, people are, are resisting that. Sorry, that's where the world's going. And it's going to be a type of systematic transition that you're going to have to deal with. And if you can't deal with it and you can't handle the high electricity in the air and in your environment, you'll pleasure yourself to death because you're not supposed to, to torture someone. So they either die in pleasure or they die suddenly. But it doesn't always happen that way. People die in pain and hospice unless they're on morphine. God, my nose. Sorry. Ugh. I, I was blowing my nose last night. Like seriously blowing my nose last night and this morning because I was sneezing yesterday in the afternoon. I knew I felt the warmth. So I knew there was growth going on because another frequency change It's going to be 60 something degrees today. It's going to be 60 degrees even next week. So we're in a warming trend. So I was sneezing a few times, blowing my nose this morning, like so much. And so, yeah. How do you feel? Okay. Okay, so when the population does increase in the future, it'll be mostly out of Africa, right? Because the West is actually declining. Gen X was the proof. They're the baby busters, right? You had the baby boomers and then the baby busters. Right there is another proof. Population boom, population bust. Universe 25 was also the proof. John Bumpus Calhoun did those experiments several times. And they always came out. He took away predation, gave them all the food, the water, and whatever, took away disease, and they all screwed each other to death, in pleasure to death. And they also fought amongst each other because of jealousy, because of deficiencies. Not everybody was, was able to get the same, you know, experiences or opportunity. And so there was that. And so Universe 25 was a proof that you go from population boom to population bust. Climate change, cancer, remedies, surgeries, the oncology, more remedies, diets, population boom, then population bust. So when you're already being conditioned to do a remedy, smoke your pot, do all your different drugs, you're getting influenced by the TV, by your friends, your family, wanting to stay in the game, wanting to make all this money. Okay, so hey, you're, you're, you're living high in the hog because you have an edge over someone. You're willing to, to, to do the drugs in a slower frequency environment. You're willing to do all the surgeries. You're willing to, you know, you have a good job and you have all the parties and the family and the friends and all the traditions. And then the climate fucking changes. Now a increase in infection, which is all the COVID-19. It's all infection. That infection is population boom, right? At the micro level. Infection is population boom. And then people are you're getting their cancer. That's another population boom. And the remedies cause more population boom because it causes offspring. Not only are you bringing in something that's causing your body to develop then antibodies, but then it stays in the body. People are relatively, a relatively closed immune system because they're taking remedies to even stop their body from releasing because they don't want to feel the pain. And so there is a population boom and it's increasing exponentially. But what's happening is either you're getting bigger and bigger, bigger, right? Some people are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so they're capitalizing on that wealth of, of obesity on some level. But then that also is eating up the resources, the infrastructure in the body. And there will be a population bust even with all that wealth. How is that? Because you, people die when, they, when they're rich and they're not taking care of themselves. They die with all the wealth around them. That's what happened. You're the core. You're the one that's leading everything, right? When you're a rich person and you're in all this wealth and you die suddenly from a heart attack or a disease, it's like a person who's so big and there's a little you, you're, you are inside there with all this wealth around you, fat, collagen, and, and whatever else, and you die suddenly. You died with so much wealth in your body because the infrastructure broke down. When a person dies in a big house, dying suddenly in a big house, they were the infrastructure. They broke down. And what's going to happen to all that wealth and all the parasites and all the family and the government and everybody descends and cannibalizes that and they start parsing out everything. Gone with the wind, right? Well, no different than an obese person. But then on the other side of it, a person who is emaciated with all that wealth and population boom, they get sucked dry. No different than when someone who's a rich grandmother or a rich, or a rich mother 
And their kids, they have like 20 kids or five kids, and the kids are just feeding off of grandma. And then grandma's becoming skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. The grandkids are feeding off her. The kids are feeding off her. All the, the, the family is feeding off her, and she's like walking around like a skeleton. That's population boom, just eating you up from the outside and the inside. You're still alive until you die suddenly. But you're surrounded by all your friends and family, all that wealth, right? Instead of a big house and a big car, it's just your friends and family who have been feeding on you for so many years. That's population boom and then bust. Oncology, more remedies and diets, population boom, then population bust. I was fooled for a minute when I read the future projections in science articles because I'm thinking like, well, they're saying that we're in the deep population in Georgia Guidestones down to 500 million, but when will that happen? Well, we don't know. But it has to go through a process. That's the future, like way in the future. It could be in 2100. But in the process, with all the different turnings every 20 years, every 40 years, there's going to be a new aggressive, not a new, more heat being turned up, more population boom, more population bust. And so then I realized that was going on because it's even then when I'm going through an, an, an energy conversion and I'm getting bigger, right? Let's see when the climate changes from either too really cold or really hot and I'm getting bloated and I'm feeling like, oh my God, or I'm hungry or I have a lot to release. That's population boom. But what's the bust? I release, but I don't die from the release process. What's going on? People who are doing population bust are dying from the release process. They're dying suddenly or they're making bad choices. And so then I realized, yes, the population boom will be the bust. That's what happened to America. Baby boomers, baby busters, millennials, and then change the climate. And then you have the, the, the alpha, the beta, and then the gamma after the millennial, the Xennials, millennials, and the Gen Z. Then you have the alpha, beta, and gamma, and they will be a smaller population. That's why it's going back to square one, alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, so I was fooled for a minute when I read the future projections in science articles because they project 12.9 billion in the future. But again, Africa is up and coming, and I focus on Africa the last few years. And with their robust bodies and harsh climate, they will surpass the West in life expectancy without even doing my protocol. The average life expectancy in Africa in the future, or even now, will be probably be 150. And they will also have a lot of children. Okay? And they'll also be lost in pleasure and doing the movies, just like the actors. They'll be lost in pleasure, alcohol, drugs, massive amounts of wealth. I already see it in Africa. And they will travel the world, throw money at everybody, right? Just like the people in the West. Flaunting their wealth. Worshipping the almighty dollar. And of course, immigration is high in, in America to replace all the diet suddenly adults. That's why immigration is so prolific right now. To make up for you guys who are diet suddenly. And make up for your kids who may not make it in this next harsher climate. Because the weather is extreme and it's hotter and colder. Okay, people are like, oh, it's, it's like snowing. It's like 10 feet of snow. It's not global warming. Well, then look at the opposite side of the country. There's fucking hot over there. It's extreme weather. That's what global warming is, extremes. It's not that everything is hot because you have to have a balancing force. The sun's over here. The earth is spinning. One side of it's going to be hot. One side of it's going to be cold, but more extreme. You're not going to have that transition as the, the, the thing keeps turning. So then you have the CERN and the HARP and the Wi-Fi and all that to modify and influencing on some level how much. Well, that's all speculative. And so the extremes between each season are going to be so drastic that these kids who, who have not been conditioned for extreme fluctuation swings in temperatures die suddenly, and they're on their fucking diets. Little skinny fucking kids. Because the weather is extreme, and it's hotter and colder, and these little frail kids who are on diets afraid of food are going to have a hard time in climate change. No different if you were to move to Africa right now, and you're a skinny kid. Skinny Caucasian kid moving to Africa, not even living in a house that's air conditioning, living in a hut, having to go out there and, and, and haul water and go to the bathroom in some, you know, some hole. You see a skinny kid here in the West, say Canton, Ohio, going 
going off to Africa and living in a hut that's not temperature controlled, having to eat whatever they have over there in Africa, having to go and haul water to bring over. No, they would, they would die. They wouldn't have what it takes to deal with it. So imagine the weather of extremes coming then to your town versus you going to Africa. Now Africa weather is coming to you. How do you think these little kids who, who don't have a conditioning process because parents don't understand, and I get it, they were never trained to, but they're not willing to change, even despite all the indicators the last three fucking years, and it's going to get progressively more extreme because they keep telling us that. They're showing us even the hurricanes. Is the hurricane season get it more extreme? They're telling you through articles. They're telling you. And we're like, oh, let's go party. Let's go. I'm so oblivious. Okay, fine. Okay, so that's why immigration is so prolific to make up. For you guys who are diet suddenly. And so because the weather's so extreme, it's hotter and colder, and little frail kids are on diets and afraid of food are going to have a little hard time in climate change. No different if you were to move to Africa right now. Most people in America would not last long in Africa because you would have to really be very strong to handle that kind of climate and be so adaptable and want to be sick. Because that's the only way you're... That's what happened with me. I had to be sick in order to acclimate to the colder weather. And I'll be sick again if it gets warmer. And that's what it what it means. Sickness is the evolution. Sickness is the pathway so you can adapt to the changing fucking conditions. That's what sickness is. Okay? So the sun is harsher in many parts of Africa. You would have to really be strong, strong Caucasian, strong black people. And so the people that live in South Africa, because you know that Britain or some people in the West, Caucasians have figured out how to colonize South Africa. So they're they're adapting. They're like experiment. Can the can the Caucasians adapt to to African? Yeah, obviously they are. Okay. So now I understand. So now that I understand remedies and surgeries and offspring and cancer and all the diet suddenly out there and the promotion of families and children and climate change. Now I read for what's not being said. I read from the agenda of the Rosicrucian. You have to understand how people control populations. And so that's what I'm saying. When you give somebody a thousand dollars, are they going to pay their bills or buy food or, you know, or save it so you can, you know, for a rainy day or something? Oh, people, when they get a thousand ducks, you know, a thousand dollars, you know what they do? They go buy stereo equipment. They go buy another fucking bobble. They go buy designer clothing or a Fendi bag. That's when you're getting thrown so much energy and so much money and so much gifts of friends and family. Guess what people do? They supernova in that energy. They supernova. And so you have to understand how, how people control populations through pleasure, through wealth and excess. Then you get innovation, yes. But if you can't temper that, if you can't control your greed for wealth and ex and success and excess. Well, then the system says, okay, you're making your choice. As they heat up the atmosphere, because it's a pattern, right? You say it's a pattern in the universe from where I don't know. Well, I do, but people will say, oh, it, it's not, it's not, they're not climate engineering the weather. It's a pattern from from who knows when. It's a pattern. Okay. Well, okay, if the earth is spinning, and obviously people do influence the earth, but we could also make it more influential because if you make it more influential and do a controlled type of situation, you can control mass extinction. It doesn't have to be total all-out extinction. But you can take out the ones that are undesirable who don't want to change. But there, <laughs> you have to figure out that the, 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 the climate is heating up for whatever you can speculate. And so you have to understand how people control populations. You have to know what the culture is, what they've told you. We're in climate change, sustainability, green machine, whatever. And you have to understand what people do and respond to how they respond and, re and their response to culture or to symptoms or to disease. Oh, God. Uh, uh. 
You have to know what the intentions are and, and also listen to the indicators of future projections and solve for X. And so algebra was always useful, but you had to know how to use it so you could critically think. But if you don't have that other information there and you don't know how to find it, then you will read things for face value. And so when I, and so when I'm saying there's, we're in a global scale down, Georgia Guidestones, 500 million in the future, and we are in an infertility is projected, and you're reading, oh, it says here that we're going to have population boom to be 388 million, and we're at 300 million, and we're 88 million in the future. Well, uh, maybe you are going to freaking die. You as a Western person who's all into wealth and excess, and then all the immigrants are coming in, and there's going to be increase in population. Ever thought of that? That all your, 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 your weak family is treating disease is going to be gone. And guess who? We have migrants who are living in, in government housing that are doing whatever jobs. There are a few towns away. And they're getting trained and stuff. So that way the guys over, over here who are taking everything for fucking granted, supernova eat who are getting paid a shit ton of money, okay, I get it, you earned your way, but you're not knowing how to temper your stuff, you're not knowing how to kind of pull back a little bit and save yourself, <laughs> right? So when you die suddenly, and when your wife dies suddenly, and your husband dies suddenly, and your kids die suddenly, oh, there's another family right there to replace you. And they're going to have to bring all their kids from below the border. That's how, that's what the population increase is. Especially when they're telling you on their side of it, yeah, we're going to be seeing infertility in the West, declining sperm rates are blamed on microplastics. But again, with microplastics, you can release that through your poop. Microplastics, that can go through your poop, no different than anything that's excess, you know, in your food. But it's when you have a closed immune system, you're not releasing so you're holding all this garbage in your colon, not saying that you should be doing all these detoxes and colon cleanses. That's not what I'm advocating at all. But when you're holding so much of that crap inside because you're taking remedies to stop your body from releasing, of course, you're going to have then an accumulation of waste material, whatever it is. That's why the J world is about releasing the demons and having an open immune system. And not trying to remedy all your disease. Because you're supposed to be releasing the waste material. Whether it's microplastics or excessive iodine or excessive vitamin D or excessive vitamin C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, whatever. But it's very easy to distract someone when you develop one or two specific things to blame for an outcome. When Correlation doesn't always mean equal causation. Yes, that might be true, but that's not the only truth. There's other truths people don't even want to consider because they focus on only what's being said, but not what's not with but what's not being said. And that's most of Americans out there who don't critically think because they don't bother to look at anything else but what is being told to them and all the fears and the emotions and they're deficient and they're remedied basically and treated to death. And so history will always repeat to those who are greedy for wealth, social capital, and never look at the past, present, or listen to future indicators. And so that picture below, you know, of that of my post about what uh, Africa is looking like, yeah, it looks like Beverly Hills, but it's Africa. It's like Ghana. And you will see people worship the influencers in Africa, religious figures, political figures, philosophical figures even science figures, and they will have their own activism, just like you when they start breaking down, when they see a pattern of disease and they don't know where it's coming from, and who knows what kind of arguments are going to be given to them at the time. And they could be giving them a patsy, someone to blame, and who knows what it is. So be very careful after they start really just, you know, just, I don't know, just, just understand that that's that that's how shit works. When things get when things get too influential, then there is the scale down, or there's a died suddenly, and it could be something like a JFK, RFK. Then you have the patsies, okay. And so you don't want to get too influential. You don't want to be too influential, but you want to understand what's going on. You want to see the patterns. You want to figure them out. 
and then you want to <laughs> assimilate and find a way to be a contributing member of society. And so, and they will have their own activism, just like you, just like Hollywood, Bollywood, and they will come up and the most strategic will survive no different than the West. So as Americans in the West are declining, immigration will increase. And you can't trust the fertility rates of sexual reproduction in America West nowadays because there's no guarantee that children are going to make it to adulthood, especially when Western fertility rates will be almost zero. Sperm count is down by 2045, 2050. Well, that's not going to happen like all like, like that. It happens in a progressive form. Right now you're seeing people are dying suddenly in Spain, in the UK, in the West, in Europe. Even in America, football players, girls, hot girls, people like, you know, Matt Perry, people like that guy over there in General Hospital, 50 years old, 15 years old, 27 years old, 67 year old, 74. Someone said that even their whole family, their sister who's 44 years old, their mom who's 74, their dad who's 78, all died within the last three years. Like her whole family is wiped out. Wait till that gets close to home. Sometimes, actually, some people right now have that too close to home. And they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm not changing. I don't care. Okay, that's fine. But that's the writing on the wall. And then childhood disease and adult disease and died suddenly are now an ongoing trend. And then the treatments out there in the holistic and the medical surgical world are even more aggressive, causing a personal overpopulation in the individual and then an aggressive decline. And so when you see, you know, yeah, you see this kid, maybe he's 15, 16, getting all the the herbal remedies and they're doing good. And then one day either they die suddenly or they just get diagnosed and they're getting rushed to the hospital because of a condition. And instead of releasing those demons and eating food and finally figuring out that you're gonna have to do things differently, know what they're doing, they're gonna have a progressive, aggressive microbial population decline in their body. If they even get that luxury to have a decline, they could just die suddenly, which is what the system is gearing towards. They don't want cancer in the future because that costs the system too much money and the suffering around the cancer industry and the disease industry is so astronomical. It's costing taxpayers money. It's costing people's you know, it's costing people's peace of mind. So if you have a die suddenly, people can get, can get past it, get over it. But now you've seen all the activism around it. Yeah, well, because it's new. Once it becomes mainstream and it's accepted that you die suddenly, it's accepted that you get cancer. People are not going to blink an eye. They'll just do what they do, like zombies. Just keep going. People are dying around them, but hey, who cares? Other people like me like, oh my God, I see the, oh my God. I, 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 when I, when I want to learn from stuff, I learn from the people around me. I, I learn from, my, you know, my, my family, what I, where I don't want to be, where I do want to be. I learn from people around me, where, I, what I want, what I don't want. I learn from my community and where I don't want to end up and where I do want to end up. I'm not one of those that have the blinders on and just live in a fantasy fucking world. I don't want to end up like some of these people. I really fucking don't. Okay. And so, yeah, there is an overpopulation in that individual and then an ad- aggressive decline and then a diet suddenly. How many people are on the diets or taking weight medication or getting surgeries or staying away from food, trying to control reproduction? That right there is population decline. And then they're tra- projecting again by 2050 fertility rates to be the, almost zero. And so that's why they must rely on immigration. Okay. There's already so many able-bodied people dying for the American dream, literally dying for the American dream. And so with, with migrants in need of housing, safety, and economic opportunity continuing to enter the United States, the overall numbers of migrant encounters with U.S. authorities this year has already surpassed last year's total, of course. And that's why Biden's doing what he's doing, because he knows, he knows, he's been told, well, he doesn't know, he's been given a script But who are his writers and whatever know that there as the heat keeps going, especially if it's being zeroed in on the, you know, 
here and and there's like stuff going on in, in Mexico with the oh, Hurricane Otis and Acapulco Acapulco has been wiped off the map. I kind of laugh, but you know, not really. Because I when when I saw Acapulco being wiped off the map, being completely devastated, and there and that's the place where Jeff Berwick and all the crypto people and all the anarchists go and hang out, and then that was wiped off the map. I was like. <laughs> That should be a clue to you, Jeff Berwick. All the anarchists out there, that should be a clue to you. They ain't going to fly. You're not going to have a place to go and congregate. And if you do, they'll wipe that off, off the map too. You're way outsmarted. Listen to indicators, people. Okay, and so I'm gonna keep hammering this home. So if I sound redundant, that's fine. You gotta understand this, Africa is growing by leaps and bounds. Immigration is up. The more the population increases, the more it will decline for those who are weaker. And so just because you see the numbers go up by 2050 universally all over the world, it can mean more births in other areas, but more deaths in other areas, especially when you see a trend in your environment of people dying suddenly or contracting cancer. Overpopulation is leading to declining in a specific people. Cancer disease is overpopulation in a specific person. You have to understand physics. When the gain equals more of a net loss. Okay, you bring somebody in who's a destroyer. Yeah, you gain a bunch of people who destroys more than they're actually contributing. Contributing, that's what cancer is. You're gaining somebody that's going to have more of a net loss because then what happens when you have the cancer or the disease or the discomfort, you're bringing in more of the weapons that are working against you, the offspring. Okay, and how many people are treating disease right now? That right there is a start of overpopulation. 2050, overpopulation leads to population decline, but each individual area can be encouraged to overpopulate individually to cause a decline at the micro level and macro level. So the government is regulating the resources in each of their countries, but each individual is responsible to regulate the resources within their body. And if you can't manage resources in your body, mind or spirit or family, the government will, and you will know, and you know what happens when you give your body, mind, and spirit to people you don't know or people you do know. They will fleece you. So we may, so we may all disagree that the world is not overpopulated based upon whatever perception we have. However, the system can encourage your body to overpopulate to cause a decline, and your friends and family encourage extensive chaotic growth in your body, mind, and spirit because of all the remedies and all the gatherings, because that also causes microbial fornication and offspring that you have to figure out. That's why they say wear the masks because it might lessen the fornication of the microbial offspring when you're exposed to somebody. And if you can't manage those resources and those resources run away from you, you'll become so overpopulated, you'll be declining. It's like being given a million dollars and you spend yourself out of existence. It's like being given a thousand beautiful girls and they screw you out of existence. Boom, what a way to go. But it's not always beautiful on the way out the door unless you die suddenly. You won't suffer, but everyone around you will, but it won't matter to you because you're not here anyways, right? You're not there anymore. And then this is the whole, the, the thing with the, the threes. <laughs> okay, according to the ancient Chinese proverb, wealth does not pass three generations. That's why America is built on a compilation of three major generations. And the transition each of the three major gener generations have transition generations in between each. So it's not literally like America's built on three generations. When you look at how we have advanced with every turning, it, it's in sets of threes. And I did that video yesterday. Okay. And so wealth does not pass three generations. The first generation builds the wealth. The second generation is inspired to preserve it by witnessing the hard work of their parents, right? And then the third generation, having never witnessed the work that went to the creation, will destroy it. They'll just eat it up and gobble it up. And those are the kids out there that are so fucking entitled. Those are the kids out there that expect everyone to give them shit. Those are the kids and the adults out there that don't want to change. That don't like the immigration. That don't like any of the changes that are going on. But yet... Their parents had to start from scratch and they're just spending the wealth out of existence. That's your community today. 
There you go. Wealth equals life. Spoiled adults and children destroy what their parents and grandparents built. Then it's time for a great reset. Now you understand why this great reset. If you do not understand why, you might be one of those adults and children who never witnessed what it's like to start from scratch. You inherited and spent yourself and the wealth out of existence. Even some Gen Xers I know think that's what life is. Spend until oblivion. Greed is good. Keep up with the guy next door until you die suddenly. And some people will never, ever get out of that mindset, ever. Because again, when you are so spoiled with being able-bodied and making so much money, and you don't realize that's not going to last long, there will become a time where either you're going to break down or the system's going to break down, and you don't want to be so mortgaged up to your asshole to where you lose everything because now you can't go to work for whatever reason. And some people are in situations where they're both having to work because they both have painted themselves in a corner. And so one person goes down and they can't make the money. They can't, then they're going to have to start scaling down their lifestyle. And could they even afford their lifestyle? Could, would, would, would their whole lifestyle go down the drain because one person dies? Well, they better have life insurance. But even then, what happens if someone just, just doesn't die? They can't work because they're really sick, but they're still alive. Could the other person, so then the other person has to make up for that and work even harder to make up for that. But then it's time to scale down. Could you scale down your lifestyle if you could, if you were forced to? Do you, do you have that room to do that? I'm glad I live in the ghetto. I'm glad I live really cheaply. I'm glad my husband has two boats. One that he doesn't have to pay any kind of money on. The other one he does. So if he ever came to that situation, he could let go of this bass boat with all the high shit on it. And he can go back to his catfish boat. And he would be perfectly fine. You don't want to put yourself that close to the scene. You want to live as minimally as possible because that day will come when the cards come tumbling down. Greed is not fucking good. You're a slave to that wealth and people will sacrifice their body, mind, and spirit and even their children to keep that wealth going. Threes. It doesn't have to be the end for you. Okay. So I was thinking about everything in three, beginning, middle, and end, right? The, the whole three generation thing. And so it doesn't have to be the end for you. But to those who refuse to evolve and change, it will be the end for them. And beginning, middle, and end happens in stages of three. So I went from 10,000 BC all the way over here to then 2050 AD. It didn't even make up to all the whole wall. I covered this wall, and then I figured out right here, 2050 AD, that's the infertility. That's what I said, quelling the Lilith within. Third time's a charm. Okay. I said, all food, yeah, but medical, nope, holistic, nope, jelly juice, not even. All food, yes. Lilith equals fertility, and that's also with Disney, but I'm not going to say Disney in my book because I'm not going to be trying to get sued by Disney for defamation, okay? So I'll say fairy tales that talk about princesses and princes and, and ogres and dragons and all that, but I will never say anything about Disney in my book because, again, he doesn't need to be defamed. And I don't need any lawsuit of defamation. Okay, but Lilith is the allegory. Disney is the allegory. There's a cycle of existence that even gets depicted in fairy tales. That even Disney, Disney, Disney didn't make it up. Disney is just taking from all the fairy, Grimm's fairy tales. And I'm not, I, Grimm is not going to sue me. But people talk about, people talk smack about Disney, but it's the Grimm's fairy tales that's telling you where you came from. The giant. And then the offspring. And then people are like, oh, now you have the Zachariah Citrin that said that Homo sapien was created, like all of a sudden it was just created. No, it was it was an evolution of people screwing each other out of existence. You had a lot of different giants from different species of giants from who knows where the fuck they came from. They they off they made the offspring and they had the animals and blah, blah, blah. and then monkeys and some like yeah the Neanderthals. In the Homo sapien, where's the missing link? Well, they the humans were here; they were separate. But how how were they? Well, they, it wasn't like fuck. 
could that be the same thing as creation? Not necessarily, because it could have, they could have taken a Neanderthal and did bioengineering. Okay, on some level. And not even bioengineering. They just said, here, you know, take a V. <laughs> here, take a V. And it caused them to be, and it gave them food. Different kind of food. They released their demons. And then they became more aware about stuff. And the, even their fanciful characteristics were a little bit different. So that was the Homo sapien. And the Homo sapiens were like, ooh, look at that Neanderthal. He's so hot. He's a caveman. And went and screwed him. And then there's all the screwing going on. And then, yes, the Homo sapiens screwed the Neanderthals out of existence. Okay? And so even evolution could have been through a V. A V-A-C-C-I-N-E. Okay? It, it wasn't like humans just appeared out of nowhere. You don't just go and take clay and be like, okay, here, here's a nose, here's an eye, and then that, that, that's a Homo sapien versus Neanderthal. I didn't go into too deep in Zachariah Sitchin. I mean, he's all about the Anunnaki. And Anunnaki, yeah, the Sumerian pantheon, because even Socrates was, was, was taught by a woman, okay? And so from 10,000 B.C. to 2050 A.D., and the beginning, middle, and end, and all that, all right? And they're playing the long game. If you, want, if you don't wake up, you'll still play the short game, and you'll lose, because you're coming in right in the middle of all this stuff. Who's you? All of us are. There, you're in the long game right now. But people are playing the short game. Many of you refuse to understand the long game and you'll play the short game and blame it on your way out the door or you'll die suddenly. And so this is the scale down. Lilith, okay, equals fertility, equals infertility. That's why even in Disney Fantasia, they showed you the Genesis and it showed you all like the, the Greek mythology. I mean, I'm telling you, Fantasia, the old Fantasia from the 1950s or whatever, the one not to Fantasia 2000, but before that, was showing you the succession of like kind of like the Bible, the Old Testament to the New Testament or, yeah, well, all the way to then the Devil's Mountain. Okay? <laughs> and so Lilith is allegory. Lilith came out of the Sumerian pantheon. Lilith, yes, all of it, Enlil, Anki, Marduk, Osiris, all the all those different players out there you hear about, people are like, oh, they're the devil. Okay. So this is the scale down. Lilith equals fertility equals infertility. 2045, 2050, infertility. 22 years of infertility or died suddenly, it's right around the corner. Wake the hell up. So many of you are not prepared for that. The kids are cute until they're not. Until they die suddenly, right? The environment is not getting any calmer. A 15-year-old might not make it past 40. Okay? So on top of that, before I get that, then I said in my book, on my, on my book, on my board, I even have a start that says gradually stop treating disease. Fertility can be highly, highly deadly, can be deadly in a highly accelerated environment. Okay? And so... A 15-year-old might not make it past 40. Think about that. People who have 15-year-olds and your and their whole world, their whole life is right before them, and they're all and they're a couple years away from graduating high school if they even survive, not die suddenly on the field or in the in the in the classroom. A 15-year-old might not make it past 40, or they die before they are 40, or they die in their 20s or in their teens. You see it in the diet suddenly groups. Forget what they blamed it on because even people who don't get a V still die suddenly. Kids are not surviving. They're young adulthood. Puppies and animals are not surviving in this environment. Somebody else said they just got another puppy. The other one died. They got another one. It's sick now. Are, are you figuring some shit out here, people? Or no, uh, they'll just keep taking on it. Because, yeah, people are suffering. And they need their emotional support animals. I get it. My information gives people who have a chance, hope, to survive the scale down. But they would have to survive. They would have to stop worshiping fertility. Literally stop worshiping offspring. Literally stop worshiping aggressive sexuality. You would have to stop worshiping the medical, holistic, energy, healing world. You would have to stop worshiping love. You would actually have to actually embrace food and relative painful release. You might even have to acknowledge that your politics, religion, and science will do you in. Worshiping your family, religion might do you in. That's the reality. You would have to temper the extreme emotions 
you hold inside if it's even possible. Everything happens in threes. And you might have to acknowledge that resistance is futile. Or watch your activist friends who are selling you something for protection spend themselves out of existence and take your money on the way out the door because you're buying what they have to sell you. And then they have to pay taxes on that. The government's getting money from people who are dying all around them. See, even your friends who are activists selling you something, whether it's a supplement, a protective gear, or who knows what, the government is making money off of using that guy or that girl as a fucking puppet. Yeah, I'm not. The government is using that guy and that girl as a puppet to be the Pied Piper and take your money. And so while that guy is selling you everything and paying taxes, that wealth, the social capital, that wealth is burning so brightly, he's being spent out of existence. And then when he dies, he'll become a martyr. Somebody else will go and take their place, take his place. They'll go and follow another activist in the same world until they die suddenly, all the while giving the government money because they have something to sell you. Oh, it, it, it's, it keeps going. And that's how, the, that's some pretty strategic shit. That's some very strategic stuff. And so that's why now my book is called, finally, because it speaks to the allegory of Lilith speaks to the Sumerian pantheon, the Jewish, speaks to the Rosicrucian. Right there, Lilith is a Rosicrucian word. Okay. And so quelling, I'm not purging out her because she's there in case I have to be whatever I have to be when the climate changes, if I need to be it. Quelling the Lilith within me, third time's a charm. Why is it third time? Because it was a medical, it was a holistic, and even the jelly juice. Third time's a charm, right? Then the jelly juice opened up my eyes. It woke me up. It's not the jelly juice anymore because you don't need jelly juice. See, medical, nope. Holistic, nope. Jelly juice, nope. Because the environment is ionic enough. What people were have, what people had an issue with way back in 2017 was the fact that I activated their immune system and they have been putting their immune system to sleep for centuries, for eons. And I woke it up. But with anything with salt, when you meet electron for electron, you become cured and then you don't evolve. And that will then also contribute to a die suddenly. So then you had to eat food. Food was the only fucking answer. And you had to blow your nose. You had to sneeze. You had to cough. You had to pull out the crap because you had to condition your elementary canal to open up to release the demons. And you couldn't take any more of the remedies. You had to gradually stop Treating your disease gradually. It can't something you can't take get away. If you're if you've been treated by with disease from an allopathic or a holistic person, relative to how strong those remedies are, it would be a, a, a transition. You'd have to gradually stop treating your disease. And you'd have to gradually get back on the food supply. All of it. Meat, milk, cheese, eggs. And if you're in hospice, stay away from pineapple juice. I don't even buy pineapples. I don't make pineapple juice or pineapple anything. What fruit do I? I have mango juice when I buy the fruit and I buy tomatoes. I don't go, I don't go crazy on the fruit. I don't go crazy on the, I buy the cabbage. I have carrots, mushrooms, and onions. And I have mango juice, I have my milk. My spaghetti, my hamburger, maybe I'll get the pork chops. Maybe I'll get a steak once in a while, maybe some pizza. But I don't go crazy on all the veggies that people do. I use the spices like garlic occasionally and Italian spices, but that's about it. They're pretty mild. Okay? So, yeah, we're back to full circle. It was always the food was the answer. 
It's the fact that people are so deficient, already starving, is why they demonize food. They can't handle symptoms. They're so deficient. Yeah. And you can I and I can't take them seriously. I mean, I take them seriously for the pain that they're in, but as far as the world that I'm in, no. They're not representation of the J world. Anyone that's afraid of food, anyone that doesn't see the writing on the wall, <laughs> literally. Yeah. You might be you might be transitioning. It's gonna take a while. But in this environment, you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> okay. You don't have a lot of time. Why is that? Because the next frequency change could take you out. But my God, you would already be then too far gone. Some people are. Some people don't even look like it. A 50 year old, a 50 year old dying suddenly. A 44 year old dying suddenly. They didn't get the luxury to get a diagnosable condition to go get it treated. They didn't get that luxury. Why? Because the environment was so intense, was so aggressive that the, the, the growth happened like that. And when growth happens like that, you don't have a chance to get ahead of it. When growth incrementally happens and you feel the pain of the body trying to push it out, but then you're resisting it by taking your over-the-counter remedies that aren't strong enough anymore. And then when the body is then getting an antibiotic resistance to the over-the-counter remedies and natural remedies, then, you sw then you're going to the doctor for something stronger. People are not going to get that luxury to go to the doctor to get something stronger. The growth is not going to be a gradual. It's going to be a like that. And that's what's going on. So. Overpopulation. Population boom. Population bust. It's happened in the first world, in the West, and it will happen in Africa. So don't be jealous of the Africans out there. They're going through the same thing we are, and they will go through their own decline, their own Armageddon, their own apocalypse. But they're on the rise up, just like Matthew Perry, on the rise up in France, and then there is a decline, and then it dies suddenly. Africa is going to go through the same process. <laughs>